for Lacanian psychoanalysis, uh, every recognition is a misrecognition. So I think I recognize myself in a mirror or when I take a selfie, but that's not me. Obviously, that's an image. It's flattened. When did we begin to figure out who we really are? In our teenage years? Perhaps during our young adulthood? During our infancy and childhood, we begin to formulate a perception of our own self-image in front of a mirror. An individual sense of self-identity is developed the moment they understand and connect their personality to the physical world. It refers to the development of our ego. This concept was first thought out by a French psychoanalyst named Jacques Lacan. The subject is always someone who lacks, who has some kind of a, a fundamental split, who's subjected to language. Uh, he even uh, will use more extreme sort of language as being castrated, that we lack something. In the event that our egos have been negatively influenced by its surroundings, what are the problems that could arise from it? My name is Clint Burnham, and I'm a professor of English at Simon Fraser University. I work on uh, digital culture and psychoanalysis and uh, my most recent book is Does the Internet Have an Unconscious? And I'm interested in the kind of anxieties and desires and enjoyment uh, that we find and look for and miss out on when we're online. But the mirror stage, what it does is it, crea it creates this sort of uh, comforting fantasy that no, we are coherent, that we are one uh, sort of person and that we, have no, that we have no kind of division within us. So that's very comforting because to confront our lack can itself be quite frightening. My name is Lou and this is how I started experiencing body dysmorphia. Hey Lou, heading home early today? Yeah, I've got so many assignments to do, and plus I gotta get ready for my day tomorrow. You know, not only do I have to worry about my upcoming quiz, I just feel like I'm not mentally prepared to go back to PE yet. Right, I forgot about that. Like, I know you don't like to exercise, but I feel like it could really help you a lot. What's that supposed to mean? Weirdly enough, she complained to me and made points to call out traits of my body, such as calling it curvy, or my face is chubby, almost as an underhanded insult. Sometimes, she also would gossip behind others and comment on their bodies too. This would later be a mindset that I have adapted from her eventually. What's the issue with Casey? Why are you always questioning me? <sighs> anyway, Casey just has this look where her legs are a bit on the thicker side. Like, I know she's fit and all, but both of them standing together just doesn't look right. I guess you could say that. Hey, it's, it's getting a bit late. Let's head home. Come on. These days, it's a bit better now, but it is something that's going on in my head and I still struggle with it. Sometimes, I look into the mirror and I was pleased. But other days, I would still often work to accept my body image. With social media, I know that it dramatically affects my relationship with my body image. Social media is notorious for having photos that are photoshopped. There are filtered pictures of ideal looking social media influencers and models on them who commonly have many plastic surgery and filters done to be publicly displayed all over the internet. Uh, well, certainly, you know, social media is complicated. Uh, I mean, I don't like to dump on it, but I don't like to think it's better than it is. On the one hand, it's certainly there's a narcissistic element or an imaginary element to what uh, social media is doing. You're, uh, you're quite often putting up images of yourself or your thoughts and so on. But those are also connected. There's a kind of a, a, a community or even kind of like a communism of, uh, of the selfie or of social media in general that you're part of a, of a larger sort of group. So, but but on the other hand, your emotions especially can get weaponized or are surveilled or monetized by social media. So it's dialectical and what I mean by that is that there are progressive as well as reactionary elements to social media, but also that they're locked into some kind of a struggle. This is an emotional trauma that leads to compulsive thoughts about the body in an effort to achieve acceptance or normality. 
The influence of appearance norms cause inner conflict and feelings of shame. Youth suffering from body dysmorphia may be negatively affected by social media by perpetuating an unattainable and fictitious image of their bodies through a widely accessible medium. It is, after all, something that seems to be popular among teens.